Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is also Anton and this is Fraser Kane. And a few weeks ago, specifically about two weeks ago from when I'm making this video, uh, we actually had um, a very popular YouTuber tune in and ask me a question that basically stumbled me and kind of made me think about things for a while and I had to do a bit of research, specifically mathematical and scientific research to be able to answer the question. And you may have guessed what the question is from the title, but the question was, if I were to look into the night skies and if I were to find Jupiter, would I be able to see the moons of Jupiter? Now, initially I said no, even though he was talking about being able to see it from Mars. But today I'm going to tell you why I was wrong and why the answer is actually yes, both from Mars and from Earth. Welcome to What The Math. So as you probably know by now, our beautiful uh, neighbor, Jupiter, has quite a lot of moons. Specifically, as of the more recent report, I think it was like 67, because we discovered a lot of new moons very recently. Um, and um, what's really interesting about it is that, well, um, it has a tremendous variety of moons. The moons of Jupiter are very different from pretty much any other moons in our solar system. And even the main four moons, also known as the Galilean moons, that are, I think, orbiting somewhere here. Let's try to find at least one of them. Um, here's Io. Uh, even these moons are actually very, very different from pretty much anything else in our solar system, except for, I guess, Europa kind of resembling Enceladus in some sense, uh, the moon of Saturn. But anyway, what we uh, are discussing in this video is, can you actually see them with, your, you know, with the naked eye and... Okay, my Jupiter just exploded. I don't know why. Ignore that. Ignore that happened. We are here to talk about if you could see the moons uh, without any binoculars or telescopes, just by standing on the planet Earth during some kind of a dark night in a really dark place. And specifically, there's really only four moons we can even consider seeing. Io, Europa, Ganymede, or more specifically, Callisto, because it's the farthest uh, from Jupiter, and I'll explain to you why this is important in uh, a few seconds. So, in terms of the actual size difference, this is what they look like compared to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter itself is not very difficult to see, it's very, very bright, but the moons, as you can see, are relatively small. Nevertheless, though, their apparent uh, magnitude, essentially their brightness, um, makes them visible. As a matter of fact, um, they are about two and a half times brighter than the absolute minimum limit for the human eye to see them. That's of course assuming that you are in a dark enough place. But there is a problem though, and the problem is that Jupiter is also extremely bright. Jupiter is very bright. Jupiter is so bright that it actually um, sort of outshines all of the objects around it. So unless you block Jupiter somehow, like for example with your thumb, which is probably not going to work, or I guess some sort of a filter, um, you will definitely not see anything because the brightness of Jupiter will cover the moons. But if you were to cover Jupiter, you would technically be able to see uh, these objects. But there's another thing we need to consider, and that's the separation angle. Basically, something that's known as parallax or the actual uh, distance between Jupiter and the moon. Um, because if they're too close, your eye will not be able to tell them apart. But if they're far enough, you should be able to tell them apart. And for this, we actually need to go back to something most of us have done already, the eye test. And I'm going to explain to you in a second. Uh, but before all of this, let's actually use this amazing simulation, absolutely free software called Stellarium, that allows us to actually imagine what it's like to see object in space as if it was basically real life. Now, um, this is kind of what it might look like if I'm just standing on the planet Earth here, and some of the stars that I'm currently able to see from my own location. I don't really know where Jupiter is, so I might have to cheat a little bit and look it up. And okay, it's somewhere over there. Um, I think I actually have to uh, basically remove the, uh, the ground here to be able to see it, and let's just do that. And so it's somewhere over there. Now, right now it's very difficult to see it, and that's because of the atmosphere, but we can also remove the atmosphere and look at that. So there is Jupiter. As you can see, it's exceptionally bright. It's very, very bright. Now, because of its brightness, it's going to cover um, pretty much everything. Uh, but if I were to look up 
its moon Callisto, it would actually point in the same direction, but it would not really be visible because of the angle of separation right now. And I think it's because Callisto is technically behind Jupiter right now, so it's kind of difficult to see. Uh, but we could maybe advance time a little bit just to see if it actually changes anything. So, and unfortunately it doesn't really change a lot, and that's because I think Jupiter is actually in a location where it's very difficult to see any moons right now. But there are uh, certain times of the year, uh, if you're looking at Jupiter from a specific angle, when you can actually see the moons really well. And as you can see, it's actually right there. So it is quite visible once you zoom in a little bit. All four, as a matter of fact, are visible. And for all four of these moons, uh, their magnitude is about 4.5 to 5.6, uh, which is actually higher than the uh, perceived limit of human eye. Now, people with basically 20-20 vision should technically be able to tell uh, stars in the sky with about 2 uh, magnitude. But these here have uh, 2.5 to maybe 3 times higher magnitude than what we can actually see. But Jupiter, once again, is too bright, so it kind of covers them. On the other hand, the separation itself, so the distance between these two objects, is very important um, as well. So, normally, uh, we cannot really see detail uh, from a far away distance. Typical test that we use to determine humans' uh, vision, at least in most countries, is this right here. It's called Snelling Chart. Um, the way it works, I'm gonna just try to zoom in to show it to you, is basically uh, for you to have 20-20 vision, or in other words, for you to be able to see um, from about 20 feet away, as you should see at 20 feet away, or in some countries it's 6-6, six, six, so 6 meters, um, you should be able to distinguish all of these letters pretty easily. And um, if you are able to tell apart the actual parts of those letters, that's when you have essentially perfect vision. Now, this is really kind of the limit, though, because of this uh, so-called angle of separation. So humans have a limit to how uh, much of separation they can actually detect. And so both for snow and chart, but also for astronomy, we often use this angle, normally in radians, not degrees, um, to basically determine the limits. And so on the chart here, at 2020 line, um, every single letter, if you were to look at it from about six meters away in a typical optometrist's office, uh, would actually create about uh, five minutes of arc. Now, in degrees, that's about, let me actually ask Google to calculate this, and it's basically approximately 0 0.08 uh, degrees. And that means that when you're looking at a letter here, uh, this angle here is about 0 0.08 degrees or a uh, five minute of arc. And that's not actually the limit. The limit is uh, determined by the um, individual part of the letter. And here, every letter is made in such a way that you should be able to distinguish one fifth of it pretty easily. And so the limit here is one minute of arc. So for most humans, and I think that actually covers pretty much almost everyone on Earth, 20-20 um, vision means that you should be able to tell apart one minute of arc uh, in terms of distance um, and be able to see one minute of arc change um, of an object moving from this location to this location. And one minute of arc is about 0 0.017 uh, degrees. Now, how about the angle of separation for, let's say, Jupiter and Callisto. So what would that create here? If I were to look at Jupiter and Callisto, um, what would I be looking at and would I be able to detect the actual differences? Well, it turns out that the distance here is actually pretty large. And specifically for Callisto, it's actually 10 minutes of arc. So that's 10 times above the limit of uh, human perception. Even for Europa and Io, um, it's high enough for us to see. So Io, I believe, is at two minutes of arc, which is double the limit. So in other words, um, hypothetically, or I guess theoretically speaking, you should be able to distinguish every object from Earth uh, pretty easily. But once again, because of the brightness of Jupiter, it's very, very, very difficult, and it can only be done when Jupiter is in the uh, specific location around its orbit, and Earth is sort of looking at it from also a specific angle. In other words, when Jupiter is not as bright as it is uh, currently in the simulation right here. But to give you a more realistic example of what it's like to basically look at Callisto um, and try to find Callisto in the night skies, uh, 10 million of arc separation is actually quite a lot. As a matter of fact, if we were to look at our moon, the size of the moon in the night sky, this right here, 
is about 30 minutes of arc. That's one third of the separation between Callisto and Jupiter. So if you were to imagine this one third distance, basically that's Jupiter and that right here is Callisto and you should be able to see it. And so to answer the question from Cody, uh, from Cody's lab, who actually asked it during the stream I had with uh, Fraser King, yeah, you can actually see uh, Jupiter's moon not just from Mars, but from Earth, assuming you're in a dark place, assuming you can cover Jupiter uh, with something so that it doesn't outshine the nearby objects, and also um, assuming that Jupiter is in a location where it's actually darker, but its moons are in a location where you can see them pretty easily. So that hopefully answers the question. And on that note, um, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space, and maybe even consider supporting the channel Patreon to help us grow. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.